Good morning. It is now day two, which is my final day. I have to leave the park about 5.30 to get the train. So I'm gonna try and fit in as much as possible. I've been debating about what to do because I wanna go on RC Racer and Parachute Drop in the studios. That's the only thing that I wanna do in there. So I think what I might do is go there first, then head over to Magic Kingdom Park. I have a backpack to drop off, my foldable backpack for all the stuff that I don't need today in the parks and then just go to Magic Kingdom. I really wanna do Big Thunder Mountain. I haven't done that yet. I'd like to do Indiana Jones. And then anything else we can get in would be perfect. If I could see Dream and Shine Bright again, that would be incredible. I have a lunch or a late lunch reservation at Walt's today, which should be super fun. I ate there years ago. So it'd be really nice to try the new menu and go back there. So yeah, I think it's gonna be an amazing day. It's already super sunny and hot. Today's supposed to be the hottest day and it's supposed to be sunny all day. But um, my feet are faring well. The plantar fasciitis has not been playing up, which is perfect. Downside, I have developed some blisters. So I'm hoping that will be good. But I am going to um, get an Uber in a minute to go to the parks, just because the bus is perfect. It takes about 20, 25 minutes. So I think I'm just gonna skip that and head straight to the parks. So uh, let's go. I cannot believe that the folded backpack, which is on the right hand side, is full and i'm like how did i get all of that stuff into my kath kidston bag and i mean i did because i bought it here and uh, i haven't actually bought anything really since i've been here so <laughs> it's crazy that i've now got two backpacks which both seem full but somehow through magic they will all fit into one and something that happened yesterday that i didn't catch was Towards the end of the day when the battery was running out, I went into the Thunder Mess and Mercantile and got this super cool scarf t-shirt. Like I've seen this on all of the trips that I've done and I love it. I love the colours, I love the slogan. I'm not a scar stan because what he did was despicable, but I really love this t-shirt. This has been my one purchase of this trip. So I'm absolutely loving wearing it today. So it is farewell to Camp Anil. That's what I'm going with. Um, I've actually really enjoyed this stay here. It's been super comfortable. Um, I love that it's kind of like in the countryside sort of things. You've got fields around you, which is lovely, even though you're super close to the parks. So I would definitely come back and stay here. I'm a big fan of staying in the Disney hotels, but if I was gonna stay off site, I would definitely come back here. Really great prices and the rooms have been super comfy and everything I needed. So let's go head out for our final day in the parks. So I have just gotten out of my Uber and instead of dropping you off at the train station and the bus station like you would if you got the bus, you get dropped off at Disney Village. I don't know if you can see behind me, but these buildings, that's Five Guys, Vapiano. So you're literally just the other side of Disney Village. You've got your own security check, so it's perfect. So let's head into the parks now. So this security point is pretty much empty, which has worked massively in my favor because the other one gets really busy. So I, it's kind of great to get dropped off at the other entrance because look how little the queues are. In fact, there are no queues. So there are a lot of people coming in, so it looks like it's going to be a busy day today. The parks aren't yet open, so people will be queuing to get in, but it looks like it's going to be a busy one. And my Uber driver, Sebastian, was telling me it's going to be 30 degrees today. Ugh. We are in, just two rides in this park, then over to Disneyland Park. Whilst you're waiting to come in, they kind of keep you in a holding area in a shaded part, which is perfect because it's super, super hot. Um, and then when they kind of let you go towards the gates, the cast members like to check your tickets to check they are the right date and stuff. Um, and the section I was waiting in, the cast member had to go somewhere because of someone's ticket. And then there was a woman behind me who was like, move move go go and was pushing me because we were waiting for the cast member and the cast member had left and she was just like just go and this is like i mentioned in my five worst things about disneyland paris some people that visit are very rude this is luckily the first thing um during this trip it's the only thing i've experienced but 
this is something to be aware of. It's now 20 past nine. We're allowed in the park. There's Buzz. We're allowed in the park 10 minutes early and Crush is already at 120 minute wait and single rider is even 55 minutes. So it shows you even during extra magic hours, that is the busiest ride at Disneyland Paris. So if you do want to go on it, I would say premier access it, or if you have extra magic hours, go there first and turn up early, like maybe 8 a.m. so you can be some of the first people in the park. But for me, the first ride of the day is gonna to be Toy Story Parachute Drop, and I'm gonna go single rider, which is only a five minute wait. So Toy Story Parachute Drop was amazing as always. And because I did single rider, I literally got in on the next ride. When you do get here, there's always a little like chain across single rider, but there's always a car stood next to it. So just tell them you're a single rider and they will let you through. So now I'm gonna walk over to RC Racer and that also is single rider. So both of these rides that I'm gonna do today in this park are single rider. So um, let's go see how long I wait for that. So the posted wait time for Toy Story Parachute Drop was 25 minutes and I went on the next ride. For RC Racer it is 30 minute and the cast members told me it probably be about 15 minute wait for single riders. So let's see how long it takes. So that was another amazing ride on RC Racer. It does make me feel a smidgen sick but um, not too bad. So what I'm gonna do now is head over to the luggage storage at the entrance of Disneyland Park and then head into that because it is, let me check the time. It's 9.47 and I've done both the rides that I wanted to in here. Same with RC Racer, single rider I want on the next ride. Absolutely perfect. So Big Thunder Mountain is the main ride that I want to do today and it is currently at a 50 minute wait and it's not even 10 a.m. so we'll only get worse throughout the day. So I am contemplating trying Premier Access. Now I never thought in Disneyland I would use Premier Access but because I'm only here for two days it might be worth trying it out. Yesterday with Mickey and the Magician it was perfect and why not? Why not? While we're here we might as well. So I'm going to try Premier Access. I think at the moment you can book between 10 and 11 to return, so that's perfect, and I can go there straight after I've dropped my bag off. So I will walk you through Premier Access as well I'm booking it. So on the home page, you just have the Premier Access symbol, and you scroll down to whichever ride you would like. Now Big Thunder is one of the most expensive at 13 euro, but it's my last day, definitely want to do it, and my feet don't want to be standing around, so, Let's try it. So that is it for Walt Disney Studios Park this trip. It is au revoir until next time. Thanks for the memories, but we will be back. It definitely seems like a very busy day today. It's 10 a.m. and there's still loads of people heading into the parks. So I think this is gonna be a perfect day to kind of really soak up what Disney has to offer. I think I might try and do the Lion King show. Um, if I can get in, that would be perfect. Um, and just a lot of things like the train, Philhar Magique. Things where the queues are maybe a little lower, they fit a lot of people in. And you could just soak up the atmosphere of the park and enjoy the park. So uh, let's go in. Okay, so this here is the queue for baggage storage. Okay, so the luggage queue was not moving and I think very easily you could end up waiting an hour, which is wild. So I've decided to bring my backpack, my second backpack, into the park at the moment. Um, I've got my premier access for Big Thunder, so I can head to that um, if it comes to it. Oh, train! I will just have to carry it all day. I might pop out later and see if it's quieter, but um, I'm not planning on doing lots of rides. And you can take bags on rides here, so it's not so much a problem. It's just the hassle of now having two bags. <laughs>
little trip in the jail wagon was amazing. It was so cute. It is definitely busy today though because people just kept stepping in front of the uh, vehicle. So do be aware if you are on Main Street, there are vehicles that operate. So just keep an eye out that you are on a normal road so you don't have a little disaster. Although my driver was fantastic. She had a nice little old fashioned horn to let people know we were coming. I don't know if you remember, but kind of a few years back, you would see travelers, usually young people backpacking through Europe with two backpacks. They'd have a big one on their back and a small one on their front. And I'm like, am I that person now? Am I gonna start doing that today? Because I'm now a two backpack person. <laughs> So Big Thunder Mountain is currently a 50 minute wait, but as I've got Premier Access, I'm gonna go and head on that now, which is very exciting. Let's do a time check to see how long the Premier Access queue takes. So, it is currently 10.23. I'm gonna go and join the queue now. I've got the little QR code for my Premier Access Pass inside the Disneyland Paris app in the wallet. So I just have to show that. So um, let's go do that now. It has Desi Premier access and you can show your QR code. Okay. Oh, oh merci. Je vous en prie. Oh sorry. Yeah, put your phone inside. Fantastic. Like a bit. Oh that's perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> like, just one? Yes, one. Just this way. Oh fantastic. Thank you so much. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah! laughs> <laughs> Such a fab cast member. So yeah, just heading there now. I've never been in a different entrance, so. So a super quick and easy way to use your pass. I love that. Put your phone in like a pizza. <laughs> Great advice. So usually, uh, when you come through, there's the two queues and the little bridge, and you actually come across the little bridge. Do you such a fantastic ride. The Premier Access was definitely worth it because the queue was so short. And where usually there are two queue systems, when I went up there, one queue system was purely for Premier Access, which is one of the reasons probably the queue is so long because you've only got one queue to stand by currently. But it's not something I thought I would ever buy at Disneyland Paris. But because it's my favorite ride here, today it was worth it for me and it was so good and just to walk straight on incredible so one thing i always enjoying is doing a tour of the park on the train and seeing as i am in frontierland and there is a station here i'm gonna go and do that i think it's just such a nice relaxing thing and i also like to that you get to see like backstage and uh, you actually go through some of the rides as well which is very exciting so I think it's such a nice thing to do. It's very relaxing. If you're looking for a little break or something, definitely think about going on the train because it's such a cute little little ride and it's really cute that it's a steam train. That's always exciting. <laughs>
if you're looking for a quiet place to chill then I definitely recommend coming over to where the um, Rhythm of the Pride Lands is and next to Cowboy Cookout because it is so quiet there is no one here it's kind of in a remote part of the park and you wouldn't really come here unless you were going to see the show or to get the train so it's a really great place to come and sit because it is so quiet perfect timing as I walk up the train has arrived so let's get on Whereas at Frontierland, walked on, same queue time. When I've got off, there's only a handful of people here. So this is definitely the one to go to if you're just wanting to go around the park rather than using it to get from one place to the other. So for lunch today, I am gonna to go to the Cowboy Cookout Barbecue where they have the veggie burger. This is something I really wanted to try during my last trip. It was sold out. So I'm gonna go try today. It's made with a Beyond patty and I love Beyond at home. So that is gonna be amazing. I have got the veggie burger so it is a beyond patty and then it also has tomato lettuce gherkin and a vegan tartar sauce so i'm very excited to try this it sounds very interesting mm. so good it's that classic beyond burger taste if you've ever had beyond burgers they're so good and this has absolutely all that flavor obviously at theme parks often you get things like hot dogs and burgers so it is nice that there is now a vegan option this is cooked on a shared grill so do be aware of that and because of that on the menu it's not marked vegan the only time you'll find items marked vegan vegan at disneyland paris are ones that are cooked specifically no cross contamination issues when you get a bite that has the lettuce, the tomato, the burger, the gherkin and the sauce, it is really good. I would never have thought of putting tartar sauce inside a burger. It actually works really, really well. So the wait times are still super, super long at the minute. So what I think I'm going to do is just explore areas of the park that I don't normally go to. So maybe um, the tree houses and things like that. I've also heard there's good views from the Frontierland playground and I've never gone to that area because I don't, I've never needed to. So I think I'm going to go and head over there and have a little look now. There is actually a shop here, like hidden, tucked out the way, which sells pins and there's also a pin trading board. So if that's something you do, definitely make sure you stop by here because this is the first time I've ever found this place. I didn't even know it existed. So if you come past the Frontierland playground, in the corner there is an amazing view of the backside of Big Thunder Mountain, which you don't normally see unless you go on the Molly Brown boat. Very peaceful here. So um, this is definitely a little hidden spot. I never really come to this area because if I don't have kids, so I've never needed a playground. So uh, it's great to experience some little hidden places that you can find in the park.
and there is also a totem pole with characters from Pocahontas on it which is amazing because you don't really see Pocahontas in the park so I think I'm going to go over to where all the caves are and the rope bridges um, I don't do that really when I come to the park so it'll be nice to go and explore them and um, it's kind of somewhere you can get lost and go and enjoy so I might go and have a look at that If you do do the treetop walk, you also find another great viewing platform for Russell and for Carl from Up. Love it. It's like these tiny little touches that are so easy to miss, but are great when you find them, which is what I love about the Disney World. So just an update on the weather. It's about 26 degrees today, no clouds in the sky, super sunny. I feel like this is a mini taster of what Florida will be like and uh, not enjoying it. <laughs> to be fair, I have got jeans on which obviously I would not be wearing in Florida, but it is super hot and it is super busy in the parks today. So I've been really lucky to kind of just be able to take the park in. I'm probably not gonna do too many rides, but I'm gonna do all those little things that I don't normally do when I come to the parks. And that's actually been really nice. And to be honest, my feet are really hurting. Where I've been doing this resting for the past eight weeks, they're not prepared. Yesterday, I think I did about 22,000 steps. So they're definitely hurting today. So it's nice to take a lot of breaks and find shady areas like this where the treetop walkways are to kind of take a little break, a little breather out of the sun. From up here you get a great view of the pirate ship which is amazing. And this is also where you get the famous rope bridge. I'm very much looking forward to going on this. tons of different pathways caves walkways it's so much fun to explore and it does feel like you are being an explorer so it does feel very exciting so i'm loving it going and looking at all these things i have no idea where i am or how to get back to the mainland of disney park <laughs> but we'll find our way don't know if this is a good or a bad idea but it's nice and cool so let's go in you can kind of also go inside Skull Rock, so you're kind of in the mouth, which is really cool. Oh, I found a stairway as well. I wonder if we can see out the eyes. Every single time I come, I always get a photo at this photo spot because I think it is so cool. You get both Skull Rock and a pirate ship. What more could you ask for? So now I'm going to head back to Main Street because I have a reservation this afternoon at Waltz. The day's actually gone super fast so quickly. So I'm really excited to go over there and try the new menu. It's going to be lovely to have a nice sit down because my feet are not happy. They're like, we're just, we're just tired now. So it's going to be great to have a nice sit indoors, lovely drink. Oh, it's great. I'm feeling a bit like Olaf in the sense that I'm melting, but not in the adorable cute way. In the like, oh, you look dreadful way. <laughs> it's so hot today, guys. So I usually visit Disneyland Paris in the off season and this is the first time I've kind of visited in a busier time of year and I can definitely see why I always pick to come in the off seasons just because you can get so much more done. Although I have to say I have really enjoyed today doing a lot of things that I normally skip over and I think it's great because it being so busy has kind of forced you to look at exploring the park in a new way. So I've definitely enjoyed that but it's no fun having to queue for everything. So definitely prefer off season. You definitely get way more done. But then this time of year, it's lovely because you have great weather and also the parks are open so much later. So you can fit more in, take more breaks because you know the park's gonna be open till very late at night. Can we just appreciate Pascal's drunk face? Oh it is 
actually super nice just to sit and people watch. There's always so much going on at Disney, you've got the vehicles going past, the castle is just great to look at. So if you do need a little rest, it's just worth taking the time out. Sometimes when you're rushing around, you kind of can forget to savour the moment. So these are the perfect times to do that. So a little update with the bag situation. I decided just to keep my backpack on me because otherwise I have to leave the park, go to the baggage place, come back in the park. It's a lot of faff. And then also to leave tonight, I don't know how busy it would be. I just assumed it would be a little wait. But if it is really long, you could potentially end up missing your train. So it's been easy enough. I've been able to go on everything with the two bags, so it's not been a problem. But yeah, I was not expecting like an hour long queue just to drop your luggage off. So when you sit down, they give you your menu, the lovely picture of Walt Disney, but you also get a sort of leaflet where you can buy the Walt's 30th anniversary pin as a memento, which is really nice. They also have the special 30th anniversary menu, which includes desserts and special drinks, and you can find this in a lot of the table service restaurants. We also have some really nice photos of things that were important to Walt. So you can see Disney and Park, Marceline, where they grew up. And when they were building the park. I am super excited to choose order a Shirley Temple because I don't really see this anywhere. So I'm so excited to get on. I am so excited for the Shirley Temple. I love this. I don't really see it very much outside of America, but obviously in Walt's restaurant, we are celebrating all things American, so I cannot wait to have this, especially on such a hot day. So good, so good. I really love that the dishes have a backstory about why they're on the menu. Obviously, at the front, it tells you that this is a Walt's restaurant, a lot of these are dishes that he so for the starter I have a fruit slaw, I have no idea what that could be, but I do kind of like that you never quite know what the dishes are going to be because their names aren't very revealing for the vegan options, so it's always a bit of a surprise. But I would say, I don't, I'm not really a fussy eater, I'll kind of eat anything as long as it's vegan. But if you do like to know exactly what dishes are, be sure to check out my other reviews of vegan food, where I can tell you what I was served compared to what it's listed as on the menu. So the fruit store has arrived and it is super beautiful. It kind of looks like coleslaw with some other pickled vegetables on top. So let's try it. So the dish essentially is coleslaw, but um, it's really nice because it isn't overly dressed. And sometimes coleslaw can be a bit sharp or a bit tart, whereas this is a really nice creamy texture and flavour. So it's really good. There was a piece of purple cauliflower and that was pickled and that was really, really tasty. I don't know why it's called fruit slaw because it was definitely coleslaw. <laughs> I've never seen coleslaw as a starter. It is a bit of a, a wild card, an odd twist. Is that good? So for my main course, I have the Thelma potato dish. And Thelma is actually someone who worked for Walt Disney and she created this recipe. It looks great. There's asparagus, there's baby sweet corn. There's a sauce, um, which I'm not quite sure what it is. It looks like there's some quinoa. And then there's like a crispy, I don't really know what it is on top, but it looks amazing. <laughs> so let's try it. So I've just finished my main course. I mean, it was very rich, so I haven't managed to finish it because it's quite heavy milk. But you kind of had potatoes, quinoa, beans, and the sauce was almost like a hollandaise type sauce with mustard in it. 
Um, so it's very nice. I think it would be polarizing. If you don't really like mustard, I don't think you would like this dish. I have to say, I'm not a big fan of very rich sauces. So the fact that it was a bit like a hollandaise was a bit too much for me personally. So if you like that sort of thing, you like mustard, you would very much enjoy this. If you aren't a fan of mustard, you probably wouldn't. So my dessert has arrived, I'm not gonna lie, I'm already feeling pretty stuffed and when they said it's a giant cookie, they were not joking. <laughs> it's genuinely a giant cookie. You also get some, um, I think it's caramel drizzle and maple syrup ice cream. I don't know if I'm gonna make my way through all of this because I'm so stuffed, but let's have a go. <laughs> So it is the exact same cookie that you can buy in the past, the chocolate and hazelnut one. So it's got quite a nutty taste, which is really nice. Um, it's more nutty than chocolatey, but in, in here it's nice and warm, which is amazing. And it's also a lot bigger than the ones you can buy in the past. The maple syrup ice cream is really nice. It's got that sweetness, but then that really nice maple flavour. Um, so that's really, really good. If you have a sweet tooth, you will really, really enjoy this dessert. And it feels like a proper dessert, so it's very, very nice. Okay, so the dessert defeated me. I could not get through it all. I am super duper full. Um, but it has been a really nice meal. I would say, because there's a lot of rich foods and strong flavours, this might not be the meal for everyone. I have enjoyed everything though, um, so it's been such a great experience to come to Waltz. So yeah, if you were looking for a great meal in a lovely setting, I mean, Waltz really is so fitting in Main Street. It's of that era, it looks amazing. So if you would like to come in here, definitely do it. It can be hard to book reservations, so do it as soon as you can. And also, if you sit by a window, you get to see a parade, which was incredible to see everyone go past. Amazing. Also worth noting that I was there for two hours, so it is a lovely meal to go and sit and relax and soak up the atmosphere, but it's not something you're going to be rushed or in and out quickly from. It costs 42 euros for three courses, so it's a really good option if you're looking for a more gourmet meal inside the park. So I finished my meal at Waltz and then I've come to the hub in front of the castle to watch Dream and Shine Brighter. They've just announced that it's going to be a modified show. Um, I don't know if that's because where it is so hot today, it, especially for people like Mickey Mouse, the people in the full costumes, it may just be too hot to do the full show. When we, I was in Waltz, the parade did come past and it seemed to come back very quickly. So I'm assuming what's going to happen is they're not actually going to do the show on the stages we'll see what happens so sadly it looks like today dream and shine brighter is literally just going to be the parade that will come past i was really hoping to catch it one more time before i left in its full version but it is totally understandable that even standing in this heat is quite unbearable so there's no way the performers could go full out in such a long and intense show in this sort of heat so I'm looking forward to seeing everyone and just the music. Guys, it's such a bop. <laughs> so I cannot wait to hear this song again. Oh, 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 oh,
good and it was still so much fun. Like it was great seeing all the characters in their costumes. They still had some of their dancers and it's just such a good song. I could listen to it all day. I really wish they would release the full version so that you can download it. So you get like ready for the ride, the full mega mix of all of the songs from the shows, and um, Il Monde qui s'est lumé, all in one. That would be incredible. So I am gonna head over to Star Traders. I haven't been yet, which I'm so surprised about, because I always love to go and have a look at see what Star Wars merch they have, and if they have any of the new stuff. Disney have just released a whole new range of Star Wars merchandise. So I'm wondering if they will have any in Star Traders. So they have this brand new Mandalorian t-shirt which is pretty cool and that is 23 euro. They also have a new Grogu and it says top of my head. Oh don't. Oh don't. Oh no. This is gonna end up coming home with me isn't it? Oh my god. Okay, so this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. It is a hundred euro. A purchase may have been made. He's got to come home with me. I know this is super expensive, but it's one of those things, isn't it? When you're a fan of something, reality and price goes out the window. You're just like, oh my gosh. I've been obsessed with the Mandalorian. Baby Grogu is everything. This is so cute. And it's one of those kind of really nice collectible items if you are a big fan. So yes, he might be expensive, but he's totally worth it. And apart from this and this t-shirt I'm wearing today, that's the only things I've bought this trip. So it probably evens out with how much I normally spend. So yes, it's very expensive, but I love him. <laughs> so I am now gonna head over to Mickey's Feel Her Magic. I love this show. I think it's so adorable, so cute, and it'll be nice to be inside in the cool. So I'm gonna head over there and watch that now. I've got less than an hour left in the park. So this is gonna be a nice little rest before heading out. The train's here. So Philhar Magic was super fun as always. I really love that any time you can hear a compilation of classic Disney songs is a win in my eyes. I also forget that they have all those special effects. So there was so much wind and I was like, oh my gosh, this was the best place to come when it's hot. It was perfect. But basically it's now time for me to start heading towards the exit so I can get to the train station in time for my train. So I'm gonna go back and take some final photos and yeah, I can't believe how quickly the day has gone. So that marks an end to another amazing Disneyland Paris trip. I have experienced so many new things this time. Premier Access was super interesting. I never thought it was something I would use, but actually it really did work out for a short trip like this. I also got to dine in new places, which were amazing. I had great times in all of those restaurants. I've just had the best time. A two day trip is really different to the usual trip I do, which is normally five days, because you know you're not gonna get everything done. So it is kind of more relaxed in a weird way. So it's been amazing to do things that I don't normally get to do. I've stayed off site, I've also used the train. Lots of firsts this time. And it's great because it just means when you have future trips, you can kind of mix and match the things you like with the things you don't like. So it's gonna be getting better and better every single time. So I just wanna say thank you so much for following along on my Disneyland Paris adventure. If you did like this and you like Disney trip vlogs and videos about how to plan your own most magical trips to Disney World at Disneyland Paris, be sure to click the subscribe button. And I'm gonna have a very exciting announcement coming up soon. So definitely make sure you keep tuned for that. And until next time, I hope you have a most magical day. Bye bye.